A good day to each and every one of you. Thank you for being with me today as we discuss okay, another topic under the creative nonfiction subject. The topic that we will be discussing for today is uh, the elements of prose fiction. And we will be talking and uh, we will be talking about these elements because of course it's like what I have asked you to do. You will be sooner you will be making your own creative nonfiction or a nonfiction material. You're gonna make your own story based on different things, you know, based on your experiences and a lot more. And before you go to that, you have to know what are the elements that you should put into that. And these elements are very important because it should be present. Okay? It should be present in your text material. And the first thing that you need to remember when you are making it, when you are making a creative nonfiction material is number one. Actually, you, you, you know this, right? You already have an idea of this. We talked about this one already, but we will be continuing knowing and, uh, you know, recalling all of these things. Because, of course, learning... Uh, there is also a, another strategy when it comes to learning is that the, the strategy of a recall. We have to recall everything. And the first thing that you have to recall is about the characters. When you're making, making a prose fiction, what you have to remember is that we have characters in there. This mainly involved what? The voices of those who are primarily concerned in the circumstances of a story. There is a story and there are a lot of incidents in there, circumstances happening, events in the story. And all of those are because a character is experiencing it, because a character is mainly involved in there. You can imagine yourself as the character or you can think about another person or another character. Sooner we will be talking about different characters and how we can make them how can we create a character to our story thus the characters are those who give life to the story okay um the story's action and scenes without the characters we don't have actions in the story without the characters we don't have life in the scenes you know and in here it is necessary to understand you know that characters are representations of men for they port, uh, portray men's feelings behaviors experiences and aspirations now we're talking about fiction in here similarly um fiction and non-fiction got characters but let us focus first on the fiction before we proceed to the non-fiction of course um in in fiction all of the characters here, or most of the characters here, are because of our imagination. This is how free fiction is. Unlike in nonfiction, um, people who are really existing are the characters. But in in fiction, you know, you can create your own character. You can make a ball pen talk. You can make an animal talk. You can make a big tree talk. And you can put, a, uh, you can make that as a character of wisdom. You know, are you getting my point? Okay, so that's it. And in there, it can in in our fiction, we can portray your character can portray a man's feeling. So if if your character is an ant, okay, so you can put um, humanity in that character. You can put a. Uh, uh, personify that character okay and you put a man's feeling on that character also you can put a man's behavior on that if you have a tree as a character you can you can have you can put a behavior of that character you can create a behavior to that character okay you can also put experiences in that character you think about what that character um, what that character experienced or what are the experiences of that character you can have um, like for example what is that movie again Zootopia 
right? So those characters there, they, they got their own experiences. And the bunny in there, the, the bunny cop in there, um, got a lot of experiences and more on the behavior and the experience of that that character revolves around her family and lastly we have the aspirations for the character a person get an aspiration and look at that a bunny is a, a having an aspiration having a dream of becoming a cop someday, someday even though she is very small you know, there are a lot of people who are looking at her as a very small person, as a very small being. But, you know, what is big about the character is her aspiration. And you can create a character that way. You can you can make an animate objects a character in your story when you are making a prose fiction. And aside from the characters, we also have to remember that um, a story... It is not a story without a setting. The situations, actions, and circumstances of a story transpire in a certain time and location. In a, in a fiction, you can you can create a story even though it is a thousand years ago. You can make a, a story set in a million years forward in the future. You know. Um, the setting as a basic element of fiction provides what? The total environment and atmosphere of the story in consideration of what? Time and space for the movements and actions of the characters in facing certain crises. In there, you can also, you know, when, when we are talking about the setting in there, you can also put your own place in there, your own setting. You know, the writer may even consider a real time and place. Just like this um, literary work, uh, it is entitled um, Morning in Nagreb Khan. It is uh, um, a story made by Manuel Aguila. You know, Manuel Aguila used his hometown Nagreb Khan as a setting of this story. You can also do that. We can we can use Langaray as our setting for the story, even though it is a fiction. You know, we can create a character. Like for example, we have a cat named um, Ginger. Okay, the the cat um, is a very timid cat. Um, he's so uh, he's so friendly. His name is Ginger, and the setting of the story of this cat revolves in Langaray. Or you can also put that or make that story about Ginger um, that revolves in the setting of the school because the, that cat actually lives in the school, right? So you can create those kind of stories, those kinds of fiction, and I think everybody can relate on that. When you when you make that story, you you, you can make um, that story relevant from from the, this time to the, to the time forward. Why people may know that there there was a cat before named Ginger in the school, but the story um, flows in a fiction fictional manner, right? So you can have it that way. Right? You can use the school, you can use your house, or your hometown, your barangay. And, you know, um, a story will have its life if there is a very good setting. And if the setting is familiar to the people. Because um, you can create your own setting, actually. You can create a, a town or um, a kingdom when you are making a fiction. Yeah, you can do that. But when you name them to places which are familiar to people they can really imagine that <laughs> but look at that but make sure that they are a bit um related and associated to each other you cannot say the kingdom of langar right <laughs> because okay so i i think it's it's possible if if langar get a king you know so that's it that's how you're gonna do it when we are talking about um the setting Okay, before I move forward, I would just like to remind you, if you have your questions, you can put all those questions in the comment section, and uh, I, will, uh, I will try to answer it, okay?
Next, after the characters and the settings, we also have the point of view. When you are going to make a story or a fictional story, you have to um, remember and consider the point of view of your story. The question to be asked for this is, who is recounting or narrating the story? Who's telling that? Who, you're going to have your... Um, you're going to have your dialogues, of course, but who's narrating it? Who's talking in the story? Um, there, there could be a person who's retelling the story. It's about your life. Or maybe if that is about your life um, uh, transpired as, uh, like, for example, you, you wanted to have um, a story of your life and you chose the character to be a bear or a cat or a dog. Now, who's talking in the story? Is it your character, you yourself? Or there's some someone who's talking or who's narrating your your life through that fiction. Okay, that, that's possible, you know. Um, this is a point of view. In the simplest sense, point of view is simply the vantage point as to how the story unfolds. Okay, it's what is the point of view? What, where does it start? Who's talking? Okay. And um, this element mainly, okay, considers how the actions and scenes of the story are told and are reported to the readers. How the actions, actions are being described. Who's talking? Who's describing the action? The scenes of the story are being told and reported to the readers. Who, who are those people? Who is that people, who, people or person who is talking in your story? So you have to think about that also. You don't, you, you can't change it. <laughs> like you cannot really change it from time to time. It will, um, it will, um, what do you call this one? Um, it will have a lot of confusion. It will confuse your readers. Because, of course, there, we, we can also talk about the plot sooner. If your plot is having a different turn, uh, twist and turns, and then your point of view is also having twists and turns. So it, it's just up to you. Actually, you can do that. But to be safe as, um, as a beginner writer, as a beginning storyteller, of course, you have to... Um, uh, stand on the basic first, and after learning the basic, you can do whatever you want. It's 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 a free literature, you know. It's a free art. Literature is a free art, also. You that that is why um, your literature should be artistic and creative. You know, you can, you can do that. You can you can make those things, but you start with the basic. But if you already have um, a strategy on how you can do that, on how you can change from one point of view to another point of view, you can do that. So there's no problem with that. But uh, this, these are the things that you need to remember. These are the elements, right? Character, setting, and then point of view. After thinking all of those three, okay, um, another thing. So in, in the point of view, you can also think about who is talking like in the first person third person or it is a very powerful omniscient point of view like there is that one being who is looking at that scenario and trying to describe it just like narrators right so that person who's just seeing the story and telling it the, the the narrator who doesn't have any connection or relation to the characters at all but there are a lot of stories uh, who is the narrator is related to the character. But you, you, can, you can do it like unrelated person who's going to re retell the story, right? And then after the point of view, you have to know and um, consider um, creating a very beautiful plot for your story. The plot simply lays out the structure of the story, considering the what? The flow of the event and the action what comes first what comes next what will happen sooner it also presents the casual relationships or connections of events why this certain event happened why another event uh, why 
uh, an event event will happen so you can also have that one in the attempt to analyze the plot okay we were trying to analyze the plot it is important to determine the significant composites of it okay uh, we, we you know this already from grade seven you've been talking about this one okay so you start with the exposition exposition talks about it um the story opens with the characters and the setting of the story you have to describe it there and then rising action you go up in there what's happening there are stories in there and then in the rising action you can also have there the problems are arising and you've been trying to um to fix the problem and now when you go to the climax there are a lot of misinterpretations uh, there are people who are saying that the climax is the most the on, uh, is only the most interesting part actually it is not only the most interesting part the climax answered or fixes the problems okay it fixes the problem okay um you can argue with me on this just like for example in the in the story of cinderella everybody or most people believe that the climax of Cinderella is the clock, the scene in the clock, right? Because she's already um, going back to being a pauper in there, um, but being poor, I mean. Okay, so in there, um, because it is so interesting and so intense, they said, or people are believing that that part of the story is the climax but in my case based on the description of the significant composites of a plot okay rising action here's the place the problems okay while the climax answered or fixes the problem so do you think there is a problem being solved in that scene so that we can call it a climax in my case, I believe that it, it doesn't have any solutions at all because that's the problem. And in that problem revolves the story. That is why it is the rising action. So the rising action is the problem of leaving that glass slipper. Now, the climax falls where? The climax is when the prince is already looking for the girl who is um owning who owns the glass slipper so that's the climax it, it's also interesting right and one of the most interesting because she has to be found you know and the and the solution for that is what knowing that cinderella the problem is whose glass slipper is this is this and the answer is it's cinderella she lives in the attic because her stepmother put her there okay and the following action is when okay when um when cinderella was revealed as the princess during that night and when everything is calmer in the story when when the problem is already done uh is already fixed or has been solved okay that is the following action and then we go to the denouement what do we have what do we have in the denouma in the denouma okay it is the ending of it okay um it's not the solution it's not anything else but it's the effect okay the resulting factor of why uh, of, of the resulting factor of that solution so what happened there the denouma is that they lived happily ever so that's it. That's how you do it. Now, you have to think about your story. Okay, so what would be the problem? Or you think about the problem that your character will be facing and you try to think of a solution for it. And then after knowing the after knowing or finding uh, uh, knowing the problem and after finding out on how to solve it, what you need to do is to create scenes around it create scenes around it what happened before what what's happening or like that right what happened before they were able to solve it and you have to make it interesting okay so that when you go to the climax the solution to the problem 
okay everybody will be interested interested in the solution so that's it okay so that's the plot and we will be talking about it further okay next is symbols okay so you don't just put um, little literal words in there you don't just put um, a story as it is Okay, you can also put a symbolism. Okay, you can also put symbolisms in there. Um, what are those things that you can do? Okay, yeah, when it comes to symbolism, um, the writer may include images that bear certain meanings that go beyond the literal. Okay, certain symbols may convey both positive and negative connotations depending on how they are used and presented and perceived and in here when we say symbolism okay um we can have an example of uh, crucifix when we talk about the cross there are negative you know negative meanings for that negative symbolisms like for example suffering death right in horror movies they have it there when you have a crucifix in there it, it is not always about the good things when you see uh uh a crucifix that is turned around okay or turned upside down um, it means something right but there is also a positive meaning for a crucifix you can also talk about salvation about of it and you can also talk about sacrifice you can also talk about even for our Christian friends in there um, you can talk about um, crucifix as a symbol of victory now huh? um, let, let me go back to um, the plot first. Another thing about the plot, uh, I have just uh, forgot. Um, there are different um, styles or techniques when you are making a plot. You can make it like a flashback. <laughs> this is the, the things that uh, I wanted to remember. You can make it as a flashback. You go back to the past. You can also have it as a flash forward or Prolipsis, okay? You Can you please type in the comment section? Prolipsis. Okay, a prolipsis is, uh, um, you know, it's um, it's a warning, you know? It's a warning. It is a suggestion. So those are the things that you need to remember when we are talking about prolipsis. It, um, yeah, it carries the plot, right? And also we have the foreshadowing. Okay, foreshadows also uh, similarly with the flash. Flash forward is just about the future, you know, the things that is not yet happening. You, you do that. While the foreshadowing is uh, a suggestion, okay, or a warning of what will happen next. They are quite similar with each other. Okay, next is um, en medias res. So meaning you can start your story in the middle. Okay, you can start your story with the flashback. You can start your story with the prolepsis. You can start your story with a foreshadow. You can start your story with um, an en medias res. Or you can start it in the middle. Right, so let's continue. So next is images. Images are the principally the features and the qualities that are concrete rather than abstract which appeal to what human senses of touch feeling sight sound taste or smell in making a story everybody it, it this is very important descriptive words are very important because of course people don't see it it is not just like a moving picture or a movie it's not an animated film that when you when you see it okay you can you can know the sense of it or you can know the feeling in that situation, sound effects and all. You can put that into a moving picture. But if it is just a text, just like what we are about to do sooner, you have to describe everything. You describe what the character is wearing. You describe where the character is. Um, you, 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 you wear the eyes of that character and what do you think the character sees? You have to describe it so that when we read it or when your reader reads it, they know, right? They know what it looks like, what the place looks like. How does it feel to stay there? Is it hot in there? Is it cold in there? So that's it, right? 
next after the images okay we have the theme what do we have in the theme typically um theme can be a statement or generalization about life what what's the theme of that is it death is it life is it leadership is it love um is it more <laughs> the highlights noteworthy realization concerning the nature and the complexities of human life cultivated from the experiences actions and decisions of the characters so the theme you can just talk about the theme death you can have um trust you can have honesty hope abstractions now what what do you want in the theme you put um you think of a theme depending on your purpose you can also do it that way or you can you can think of a theme and then uh, think of purpose out of it. You can do it vice versa, right? So I think we are done. And now what I want you to do is to read, okay? Find this story, okay? This story. <laughs> am I am I pointing it correct? Find this story. Find this story, Big Sister by uh, Cons uh, Consortio Borges. Okay, so you have to find it and read it. It's really good. And you know what, what I like about, about this story, um, it focuses mostly on the plot. Uh, that, 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 that is my um, clue for you, a hint of how the story is made. I really love how the story is made. Um, you, you should really understand it so that um, you can analyze it using all of these elements that we have okay the elements of prose so you have to read this it's really beautiful and uh, i hope you can also relate on that because not everybody will stay with us oh well sad yarn all right so that's it if you have any questions you can just type it in the comment section and uh, don't forget Okay, don't forget to write your name in section in the comment section so that I know that you have watched the video. All right. Uh, thank you for finishing the video. Um, I know that um, you're, you, everybody's so busy, right? And you have given time to learn more about our topic for today. Thank you so much. Bye-bye.